Yes, okay. Thank you, Ken. Okay. Can you hear me okay? All right, awesome. A lot of times I don't need this because I'm pretty boisterous. Uh, as, as the PC is getting all set up, let me introduce myself. My name is uh, Jeff Sharp. I'm the uh, Director of Product Management at a, a company called AD Link. So how many of here have ever heard of AD Link? Who in the world is AD Link? Wow, okay. <laughs> uh, so AD Link is one of these Wizard of Oz. I'm the guy behind the curtain. Uh, we're a company that's been around about 22 years uh, and we're embedded in the first 15, 20 years uh, really in embedded compute. And over the past five years, we've really focused more on platform-oriented systems, more solution-oriented systems, and uh, we're kind of across the board in different markets. Uh, my key market is mobile and telecom. I'm an old guy, I've been around uh, the industry for about 32 years, and uh, I'm really excited about OCP, uh, especially in the telecom, because our key focus within uh, AD Link is, is uh, edge computing. Uh, edge computing for me is really around um, at the edge, uh, the definition of edge for me is customer premise, radio tower for uh, uh, mobile, um, closed environmental vaults for landlines, uh, and also the central office. So as the operators are starting to remove equipment from the central office, they're gonna replace it with hopefully OCP gear. That's what we're all here about is to really drive a collaborative effort and open architecture that they can put into uh, the central offices and the towers and the customer premise for things like a virtual CPE. Um, we, uh, I'll go into a little more detail of one of our key products because uh, I'm happy to announce that uh, two months ago we submitted uh, a spec within the OCP Telecom Group uh, that defines the insides of a sled that actually Rate Assist has done a really great job on, on doing the spec for the frame and the sleds themselves. And I'll go into more detail of our spec and how that fits into the carrier grade rack, open rack system. Um, uh, AD Link is a true believer in standards. We're a true believer in uh, collaborative efforts. Uh, we've been around a long time and actually key members of, you know, like PICMIG. Now uh, we're a gold member of OCP, uh, TIP. Uh, cord. Uh, we're on the peripheral of cord right now, just trying to get our feel within cord. Um, we're a top three uh, Intel Alliance partner uh, because of all the uh, markets that we in, we sell the Intel uh, chipsets. Uh, CPTA, uh, PICMIG, uh, Advanced ATCA, all of these open standards uh, we truly, truly try to drive. And as a matter of fact, my product that I'm going to talk about is really focused on open architecture. We are opening our kimono. I know it's a little scary for me and you guys, but we're opening our kimono on this product because we truly believe that uh, uh, other manufacturers can build this for the OCP sled. Um, the product itself that our OCP spec is based on uh, is called MICA, M-I-C-A. It stands for Modular Industrial Cloud Architecture. And the key word here is modular. Uh, because our, uh, our focus is taking individual type sleds. They could be x86 based sleds, they could be hardware acceleration sleds, NIMS, NICs, uh, ASICs, they could be ARM based processors, all in a form factor that can be reused in different system types, OC being, uh, OCP being one. Uh, they're from large scale, down to small scale. And we don't really want to compete with the Quantas, the NSPURS, the HPs, and the Telco data center because we really believe that there's a niche, uh, a really great environment in that central office or closer to the customer premise because of the way that the network will evolve and you still need DPI, you still need security, you still need traffic management in all of these different areas. So having the ability to scale and flex your system uh, we feel is, is really important. And the second key item is, is this thing called industrial. So all of our gear, we, we sell into the military, we sell into telecom, we sell into healthcare, things that really need rugged uh, types of products. And with that, our Mika is focused on carrier grade for the telco environment, 
uh, and NEBS ready type hardware. And then cloud, of course, uh, 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 cloud is up in the data centers and now you have this thing, I'm not sure if you guys heard it, it's called fog. Fog is closer to the ground, it's more edge, so we're also focused on the, uh, the fog environment. So again, we're committed to standards and uh, with our spec being submitted, we uh, uh, are, are really committed to that open architecture with our Mika system. Uh, the Mika system actually got its birth from Intel. So Intel was uh, looking for a replacement of RSA, rack scale architecture, and uh, they actually called it uh, open converged modular architecture and they wanted to implement the silicon photonics backplane. They couldn't do it. Uh, so they came to us since we're a key partner with them and said, look, do you guys want to take over this architecture, uh, overcome some of the barriers and we'll help support you. We'll even give you some R&D dollars. And if you push our Skylake, our Pearly and our Red Rock Canyon, this will be perfect match for Intel and 80 Link. So we did. And uh, last year, uh, about June time period, we announced the Mika system. And uh, we're out there, it's a, it's a real life system. We've got product SKUs and whatnot. And now we're actually converting that into this uh, OCP uh, carrier grade open rack system. And what that does is, is companies like Orange, companies like Verizon, even uh, the Tims such as uh, Juniper or Ericsson or Cisco, some of our existing customers can take a common platform, one of these sleds, and implement it in different system types, including OCP. Um, not going to go into heavy detail, but this is kind of a lot of the use cases that we're involved with with Edge Compute. Um, there are so many different terms now for edge computing, it's actually uh, fairly confusing. Uh, there's mobile edge compute, which like uh, NFV, it's an Etsy based uh, uh, standard that we're also part of, we're a key member of Etsy. Uh, there's FOG consortium, which is more focused on IoT type devices. So I'm really kind of narrowing it down to edge compute and with edge compute, uh, when you put gear into the central office or at the tower itself or the CEVs, there are certain things that, that are required other than just x86 CPU processing. Uh, you may want to have security hardware acceleration with like Coletto Creek. Uh, you may want to do certain types of routing functions within that edge uh, to be able to, to deliver these type of uh, use cases that are being driven by uh, um, by the operators. And the cool thing about edge compute, well, it's, it's a double-edged sword. We're, uh, we're a bit, I wouldn't say frustrated, but it's two years, right? And there's a lot of trials, there's all this, but like everyone in this room, we're like, okay, where's the revenue? Where, <laughs> where, where can we see this ball rolling uh, starting to happen with edge compute? And luckily, the Etsy version of mobile edge compute, that spec was uh, finalized at the end of last year. Uh, and if you want any more information, you can go to our website or you can go to Etsy uh, Mac to go through some of the use cases. So Mika. Uh, so as I said, we have these common module types uh, from a CPU sled to a, a in integrated switching sled. Uh, and by the way, our switching sleds are like hybrid sleds. They allow uh, Ethernet input output. They also do PCI switching. That's one of the benefits of the Intel Red Rock Canyon. And we're doing a Broadcom switch and uh, kind of early to announce, but we're also working with Mellanox to do uh, uh, more layer four, layer seven type switching capabilities. And we have IO processors and we're also uh, working with various ecosystem partners on storage sleds as well. But all of these sleds are interchangeable between like a carrier grade 2U system that could be specific for DPI. So I need tons of IO. Uh, it could be a 4U system that, that you remove your top of rack switch and you embed it within the system because you may want to do PCI switching within the system. And we're also doing a hyper-converged infrastructure as well with uh, these SATA arrays in the back for private cloud networks. And then the key part, the reason we're all here is the OCP telecom sled uh, that we've been working with Radisys on and others to actually take all of this common elements and implement it into an OCP environment. Um, this is the snapshot of what we have today. 
Uh, we have a Broadwell, we have a Pearly, we also have a Pearly with FPGA. We're one of the first uh, companies to deliver the FPGA from uh, Altera uh, on the Skylake base platform. It's in our lab. Uh, we're actually going to go to market uh, next month for some trials. Um, we also have a Skylake, which is uh, really dense. We have a quarter width sled and a half width sled. And uh, we have different switching types. We have a PEC switch, we have a Red Rock Canyon, we have a Broadcom switch, and we're also working with hardware accelerators. Tons of I.O. and then the different system types. So what does all this mean for uh, OCP? I'll, I'll kind of get going here. So really it's taking all of this type of infrastructure and enabling that into both a half-width sled and a full-width sled because with our customer base, including the service providers and the TIMS, they don't want to lose some of their differentiation that they currently have with proprietary built hardware or specially built hardware um, because that's, that's how their system works. It could be using a uh, offloaded uh, security accelerator, a crypto chip, it could be an ASIC, it could be an ARM-based processor. So what we've done is, is we've taken our, our Mika platform and allow these different types of arrangements than just a typical uh, x86 sled um, that could be put into the central office. And we truly feel that uh, within the Telegram uh, group with OCP, that OCP will more than likely be the, the filler of all the systems within that central office. Um, and Radisys has done a great job because of the 19-inch frame, the DC power, uh, the way that the frame is, uh, is architected is exactly what the telcos are looking for. Um, they just don't want to do a rack and stack or, again, proprietary built hardware. They want openness. And we think that our spec really uh, delivers that. Um, so the actual open uh, sled uh, enables uh, uh, all of our suppliers and our carriers to kind of customize what they want to do. That's kind of the niche area that we really feel that this sled fits well into. Especially um, when we define the zones within the sled. Actually, let me kind of just jump forward because the picture, picture paints a thousand words. This is the spec in which Radisys has done for the full frame. Uh, the actual sheet metal and the interfaces uh, for the half width and the full width sled and we're defining everything that's inside these, uh, these sleds themselves. And what we're doing is, is we're defining the zones. And what the zones do is the first three zones are really the environmentals of the sled. And the key to this is, is that I know normally in the OCP world, it's, it's focused on enterprise, it's focused on data center. Well, in the, in the telco world, old guy, telco, uh, there's a lot of different characteristics that is going to be expected in a telecom environment. So we've kind of uh, set aside the zone one, two, and three for environmentals, power, fan, the way that we cool the system, and actually the hardened hardware that goes in for earthquake, for, and I wouldn't say we're going to go to NEBS, but certain great NEBS level in, in arrangements that will fit into the sled. Zone four is where we feel the, uh, the key aspect of this, uh, this technology is. Because zone four is where you put your hardware accelerators, this is where you put your ASICs, your uh, riser cards for things like Netronome, uh, SmartNix, uh, uh, different types of uh, NIMS from 10 gig to 40 gig, 50, all the way to 100 gig. And also, the front part is kind of your CPU realm, and the other change that we've done with Rate Assist is that Rate Assist has a full flat panel. We have the ability, we're working with Pentair and Asus, to have the ability to have a hinge front panel that you can physically slide these sleds out within the sled for hot swappable. So instead of pulling out the entire body of the sled, we can actually pull out that one individual module, replace the DIMMs and whatnot. And it was funny, so I'm an old telco guy, like I said, and watching the uh, uh, Yahoo Japan uh, uh, presentation, I was cracking up. But one thing that caught my mind is, remember, he pulled that thing out, he walked over, and he took it apart, he grabbed it in and stuck it in. If he was in a telco, he would have been fired because there's no electronic static uh, mats or anything like that. You just don't put DIMMs in in the telco world. So we're putting a, a, a way to, to ground the person within that some of the key things that the telcos are looking for. 
Um, so again, this is kind of a top view looking down. Um, and this is a ready product. The only thing that we're really working on now, specifically for some upcoming trials and proof of concepts, is the actual uh, modular mezzanine card uh, that will fit into the Radius's shelf system for 10 gig. Uh, that'll be ready in the June time period. Uh, but everything else is ready to go. We've already submitted the spec with the SKUs, the step files. Everything's pretty much ready to go. We've also defined uh, all of the pinout configurations, so you no longer have to worry about cables, you no longer have to worry about cables coming undone, uh, ribbon cables, uh, fringed cables, it's all done by our Mika spec, which is, uh, uh, defines all the PCI pinouts. And where we also see the value is, is that these will have riser cards on there, so you can populate other hardware accelerators that are off the shelf. Uh, that uh, you know your golden fingers will pop in and it'll be able to work on the NIM itself. It's, it's, it's uh, for open air environment too. It has the fans uh, that was defined by uh, rate assist, but we're actually defining the zones where it is within the sled. The actual holes that your CPUs can be manufactured to be able to attach and then the sliding mechanisms, mechanisms to allow those individual sleds to be pulled and uh, pushed in. Another key element of this too is that there's some, uh, actually there's many types of use cases that really rely on non topper rack switching. Uh, so this is kind of where your PCI switching comes into pay, uh, play with uh, PEX and also with the Red Rock Canyon in which uh, this individual 2U unit or maybe a 4U unit could all be connected together through PCI switching. So you have the ability to uh, assign different PCI lanes to cluster CPUs, cluster memory, things like MROV that we're working on with uh, the Taiwanese government for the military. These really cool attributes are coming into play that you kind of may need to do some PCI switching within your half width or your full width sled. Uh, front, top, and rear view. Um, and again, Radisys has, has, has done a lot of the legwork for us by actually defining you know, all the attributes of the physical uh, sled itself, the sheet metal, the connectors, the OCP DC bus bar, the Molex fiber connector here, the, where the, uh, the fan uh, inlets are. And, but what we've also done is, is we've also provided an option to have front panel access to enable things like VGA ports, USB ports for easy loading, BIOS or firmware loading without having to actually pull it out or dial directly in. So it's, uh, it's an option, you don't have to do it. You can use the normal rate assist piece and then with the, either the hinge front panel or the way to, to take it off and then slide in your sleds. Uh, we also have the ability for hot swappable drives uh, to go into the front, two and a half drives for either HDD or SSD. So uh, once our spec has been approved, um, we're also working with multiple ecosystem uh, uh, providers as well to do a full width sled. And this is kind of where we also see some of the benefits around the PCI Express switching, some of the internal switching components to cluster your CPUs, memory, storage, uh, individually instead of an entire frame for those special needs of uh, edge computing. Um, and we're working with uh, uh, Bill Carter, maybe with Olympus, trying to how, to how do we fit into that? How can they fit into us? Working with them on that was, uh, is, is pretty important, especially in the telecom environment. So hopefully we're gonna be submitting this within the next uh, two to three months as well. Um, and our roadmap, uh, you know, again, we're doing the Intel TikTok program with all the Intel processors. We have Broadwell, we have Skylake. We're now coming out with Perly with FPGA. Uh, we're working with the Rapid IO group uh, with IDT to see for 5G video acceleration, how we can incorporate that into our, uh, our OCP mezzanine card. Uh, we're also working with NXP and ARM to do uh, ARM64. NXP, you know, with the, the buy with uh, Qualcomm, we're kind of in a holding position to see where Qualcomm's gonna move that to. Um, also Mellanox, we're doing their easy chip 
uh, as a sled as well as a complement to our Red Rock Canyon and our Broadcom switch sets. Uh, and then, you know, working with multiple vendors, we're not a storage provider. There's a, becoming a lot of storage, really cool storage needs. So we're working with uh, companies like, uh, horrible name, New Isis. I'm not sure if you're familiar with New Isis. <laughs> or like, you guys got to change your name, but uh, they're doing it right. They're the server provider for all of Netflix. So they know what they're doing. Uh, and also some others like Stack Velocity and Sandblaze and Seagate and whatnot to do some storage. And we're also doing, uh, there's special needs for embedded GPUs and of course our hyper-converged infrastructure and whatnot. Going back to our collaborative and our ecosystem, um, we truly believe in, in getting as many partners as we possibly can to add a lot of benefits to our Mika system and all of our systems, not just from a hardware capability, but also from a software capability and integration uh, and services. So, you know, ADLink, our DNA is manufacturing, it's hardware. We do do software. We just acquired a company called uh, Prism Tech. But we want to partner with as many people as we possibly can. So when we go to the, the carriers, the service providers, they feel confident that not just the hardware works, but the entire NFV infrastructure, the MEC infrastructure, the middleware, everything has been pre-tested, even if it's uh, OpenStack open source, or Wind River uh, Core, or Red Hat, they know that uh, we've got it done. And uh, we're building uh, these innovation centers worldwide. Uh, so ADLink has, uh, our North America headquarters is here in San Jose. Uh, we do integration, we do some manufacturing, we do support. Uh, they actually have their own PNL. That's how uh, ADLink works, is all of our regional uh, RBUs, our regional business units, uh, they do the same thing. Integration, design, uh, validation testing, and some manufacturing. Europe is uh, Paris, London, uh, Tel Aviv, and Mannheim, Germany. Uh, and we're putting in these innovation labs to have the ability to take things like OCP and all of our hardened servers and Mika systems and build up the middleware with our partners, but also validate all of the uh, software components, VNFs or virtual machines on top. And then of course the open source, uh, the big one we're working on is Redfish. Uh, trying to ensure all this is integrated within our system as options for the, uh, for the operator. So in conclusion, um, we're definitely believing in open architecture. We are a, a, a huge driver in standards, um, and we're doing so by taking a, a product that we've spent millions of, uh, basically years, two years to develop, and we're throwing it out there through OCP. We're throwing out the, uh, the design, the board schematics, because we truly believe in this open collaborative environment. Um, we have a ton of ecosystem partners. Uh, we truly believe in, in bringing in those partners as an as-needed basis and growing it as we go through our innovation centers. Uh, we submitted a spec at the end of J January. It's going through the approval process. Please go into the OCP uh, uh, telecom group and you can review it, look at it. And uh, hopefully the spec will be uh, approved within the next week or so. And uh, we can get on with some of our proof of concepts and really drive uh, this OCP platform into the operators as uh, they're removing equipment out. Um, uh, let's see. And that's it. Any quick questions? I, can, uh, I, th I think we're kind of short on time, but uh, yes, Andrew. And, and I want to mention too with Radisys, uh, you know, a great company and what they've done with the frame itself, the sleds, the architecture with Matt St. Peter and Andrew's team. Uh, it's an, a, a really great achievement and I really do think it's a great foundation on how we deploy OCP in the telecom world and I'm uh, really happy to be part of their, that, that team to implement this uh, sled environment. Yes. Uh, 
Well, anywhere that they put an OCP type infrastructure that is 19 inch, the carrier grade infrastructure, our platform will fit very nicely in. And if it's edge compute, and by the way, the industry, uh, this is kind of where it gets confusing. The industry is, is now calling the central office, the switching offices, the edge. And uh, so anything that can fit in that central office, whether it's an EPC, an MME, serving gateway or whatever, if they don't move it into the, the telco data center, they keep it there, then yes, we could also be a core as well. Um, but we feel that with the product and the, um, the way that the switching is set up and the infrastructure, uh, it's really geared, not geared, but it's uh, specialized for anything that's in that central office for distributed processing, for like network security, network DPI, load balancing, traffic management, content injection, CALIA, lawful intercept, all of these, because that's what it's built for, because of the hardware accelerators. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Well, I'm waiting to hear back from the operators. I think the operators really need to tell us, Radisys and others, what they want from a protection perspective on, on NEBS. So we're kind of in a, I wouldn't say a glide path pattern on NEBS because we don't want to um, over, uh, how should I say, over engineer the systems if the operators really don't want to pay for all that NEBS stuff. There's really great things in NEBS and some of the GR, and then there's other things that are good, but they increase the cost. And of course, the operators, it's all about lowering their cost and their investments. So the simple things like uh, uh, power protection, lightning protection, hardened sleds, hardened environments where your sleds put in that can withstand certain shock and absorption that we actually do. Did, did that answer your question? Um, with 5G coming out, we also have a product that uh, is an outdoor server. It's actually a Xeon class uh, outdoor server that you put at the tower, at the RAN tower. Um, that's not part of Mika, but we really see the compute power at the tower and at the central office to do things like augmented reality um, or higher speed, uh, low latency access. Also with the amount of IOT devices and machine to machine devices that are being implemented that, that really require low latency, that's the environment that, that you want to place it. And when they're doing, and what they're going on right now is, is analytics, ran analytics to, while they're testing 5G to see what that latency is. So if there's a cluster of low latency needs, they'll put that at the tower, but if there's, Um, we just did a white paper, so you can download the white paper with IGR. We estimate it being a, a multi-billion, but I don't see it being as probably big as the telco data centers from the, the full width sleds. I think uh, those will be more services oriented, more things like unified communications, IMS, EPC functions. But we also see the need that you know, the carriers are sitting on these great assets called real estate that they could put all this compute power in. So, and with distributed networks, and the, uh, how should I say, the overcomplication that the telco network is in now, they're trying to lessen that complication. So I think move, some will actually move into the central office than just being in the cloud. Because think about it, if you're in a public cloud or a private cloud in Salt Lake City, but I'm doing a virtual CPE in New York, it's very tough because that low latency is really required in that environment. And with spectrum split splitting within 5G, I also see that there's revenue opportunities that the operators are looking for, for specialized compute gear in those central offices. And I've kind of run out of time. If you want to have some more questions, I'm available all day. And thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>